Last 26 Super Bowl halftime shows ranked, from U2 to Justin Timberlake, photos. 1 U2, 2002. There will likely never be a halftime show bigger than this one. Mounted just four months after 9-11's, U2's show was a perfect mix of poignant remembrance and breathtaking musicianship. In a beautiful tribute, U2 performed Where the Streets Have No Name in front of a scrolling list of those who perished in the terror attack. To this day, the show still draws tears. 2 Michael Jackson, 1993 The one that started it all. MJ's reign as the king of pop was coming to an end at this time, and the beginning of his creeper reputation began later that year with the first wave of sexual abuse allegations but he still had enough star power to make the halftime show a must-watch event for the first time ever. The children's choir performance of We Are The World, followed by Jackson's dramatic finale performance of Heal The World, became a defining moment of his career, one that would be reenacted 16 years later at his memorial service at the Staples Center. 3 Coldplay, Beyoncé and Bruno Mars, 2016 Coldplay was the official act, but they turned their show into a tribute to all the halftimes that came before. Bruno returned with Uptown Funk under his belt, while Beyoncé began her domination of 2016 with a tribute to the Black Panthers. Coldplay, meanwhile, turned out Viva La Vida complete with a kid orchestra led by maestro Gustavo Dudamel and a colorful crowd card stunt that showed up with people how it's done. For Aerosmith and NSYNC, 2001. Okay, okay. Some older readers might be annoyed that a show with Bye 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 and Britney Spears got ranked above one with Born to Run and 10th Avenue Freeze Out, but back in 2001 this lineup was a big deal. After struggling through the 90s, the NFL gave control of the halftime show to MTV, who responded by gathering the biggest top 40 heavyweights that could be found. The sight of Aerosmith performing Walk This Way with Spears, Nelly, Mary J. Blige and the biggest boy band of all time in NSYNC was the kind of show the NFL had been dreaming of for years. 5 Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band, 2009 Wasn't Super Bowl Slyene amazing? Not only did it have one of the most dramatic championship games ever between the Steelers and Cardinals, but it also had a performance from the boss that was the apex of the classic rock era. From his order to put the chicken fingers to own to his knee slide right into the camera, Springsteen was on a mission to get everyone out of their seats. Mission accomplished, sir. 7 Prince, 2007 Super Bowl XLI took place under a torrential Florida downpour, but that played right into Prince's hands. His performance of Purple Rain amid raindrops turned purple by stage lights was breathtaking, as was his take on Bob Dylan's All Along the Watchtower. 8 Katy Perry, 2015 This is a halftime show that we'll look back at as emblematic of its time. Katy's show was loud, weird, and specifically tailored to the internet's tendency to latch onto viral moments and meme the phage suits out of them. But in terms of actual musical performances, the real star was Missy Elliott, who strutted out in a surprise appearance and blew the crowd away. She didn't steal the spotlight. She commandeered it. 9 Paul McCartney, 2005, Sir Paul's show marked the beginning of the six-year classic rock era of halftime shows following the backlash from Janet Jackson's notorious wardrobe malfunction in 2004 and what a breath of fresh air it was. McCartney knew exactly what songs from his catalogue would fill up a football stadium. Starting with Drive My Car, pumping through with Live and Let Die, and finishing with the crowd pleaser Hey Jude, this show showed how sometimes the old ways are the best. 10 Diana Ross, 1996 The halftime show went through some growing pains in the 1990s, but Diana Ross' soulful performance at Super Bowl 30 was definitely a high point. Her dramatic exit by a helicopter was a precursor for the larger-than-life moments that later performers would pick up.
11 Janet Jackson and Justin Timberlake, 2004. Ah, yes. Maybe this isn't the best, but it was definitely among the most memorable. Janet and Justin were doing a rendition of Rock Your Body that was absolutely smoking, until the smoke turned into a PTC wildfire. In hindsight, the wardrobe malfunction might have saved this show. Does anyone even remember that Nelly, Diddy, and Kid Rock also performed that night? 12 Madonna, LMFAO, Nicki Minaj, MIA, CeeLo Green, 2012 Madonna's halftime show wound up being a bit chaotic. It featured a slew of guests, including Nicki Minaj and CeeLo Green, and went all in on being an over-the-top spectacle. Through it all, the most memorable moment may have been MIA flipping the bird on live TV. NFL sued over the move, in fact, but wound up settling. 13 Bruno Mars, Red Hot Chili Peppers, 2014 Following Beyonce at the Super Bowl must have been a daunting prospect, but Bruno Mars still managed to put on a good show with a little help from the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Unfortunately, it came out later the band wasn't actually playing its own instruments, which marred the whole show a bit. 14 Lady Gaga, 2017 Gaga kicked it off by jumping off the roof of Reliance Stadium, which was incredibly awesome. Everything that came after, by comparison, seemed rather mundane, with no guests artists or anything particularly surprising happening. It was a solid Lady Gaga show, to be sure but for the The Super Bowl we need something more. 15 Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, 2008 More concerned with performance than spectacle, Tom Petty opened the Super Bowl XLII halftime show with crowd favorites American Girl and I Won't Back Down. Petty's performance didn't blow any doors off, but it nailed all the hits and gave everyone a solid show. 16 The Rolling Stones, 2006 Mick Jagger and the Rolling Stones took a break from the world tour supporting their 24th studio album A Bigger Bang in 2006 to perform at the halftime show for Super Bowl 40. The Stones turned in a lot of energy, but the NFL snipped a few of Mick's racier lyrics in the pre-recorded tape, leaving Mick a bit miffed. 17 Justin Timberlake, 2018 Justin went through a serviceable run of his main hits taking his show from a room inside the U.S. Bank Stadium up into the Super Bowl Lee crowd. But the audio was garbled to start off the show, and some didn't appreciate the Prince tribute and the use of Rock Your Body, the song that triggered the wardrobe malfunction. 18 Boys Two Men, Smokey Robinson, Martha Reeves, The Temptations, 1998 In celebration of Motown's 40th anniversary, Boys two men led the Super Bowl 32 halftime show, with assists from legends like Smokey Robinson, Martha Reeves, and The Temptations. The 40 years of age come through in this one, though. While it's a fun set, it ultimately doesn't strike too lasting a chord. 19 Gloria Estefan, Stevie Wonder, Big Bad Voodoo Daddy, and Savion Glover, 1999. The seemingly random lineup of Gloria Estefan, Stevie Wonder and swing revivalists Big Bad Voodoo Daddy combined to make 1999's halftime show a high-energy affair. There was even a cameo by E.T., the extraterrestrial, to help stump for Progressive Auto Insurance, who sponsored the show. 20 Clint Black, Tanya Tucker, Travis Stritt, and the Judds. 1994 Super Bowl 28 tapped country music stars for an ultimately unmemorable Rockin' Country Sunday halftime show. Clint Black, Tanya Tucker, Travis Stritt, and Winona Judd all performed a few of their hits, with Naomi Judd joining her daughter on stage for the finale, Love Can Build a Bridge. 21 Shania Twain, No Doubt, and Sting. 2003, This One Is Just Forgettable, particularly since after the game, 
Bon Jovi stole the spotlight by singing It's My Life just before the Tampa Bay Buccaneers were awarded the trophy. Gwen Stefani teaming up with Sting to do Message in a Bottle almost saved this show. Almost. 22 Phil Collins, Enrique Iglesias, and Christina Aguilera. 2000, wow. Look at that lineup. By all rights, that should be a smash show. But it ended up being a Disney produced bore about the tapestry of nations. Instead of thumping out Genesis songs, Collins got stuck doing one of the songs he wrote for Tarzan. Iglesias and Aguilera did a duet called Celebrate the Future Hand in Hand. Amazingly, Stina would go on to hit a bigger low at the Super Bowl when she flubbed the national anthem a decade later. 23 James Brown, ZZ Top, and the Blues Brothers 1997, another lineup that seemed great on paper and disappointed in reality. The godfather of soul was forced to blatantly lip-sync his greatest hits, and Jim Belushi cavorted around the stage doing a weak imitation of his brother John in his iconic role. 24 The Who, 2010 Let's make something clear, The Who are absolute legends. They are essential not just to rock, but to all of music. But unlike previous classic rock acts, Roger Daltrey and Pete Townsend really felt past their prime in this performance, and that's the worst thing you can do at a show like this. Some have speculated that since Roger and Pete had never seen an American football game before, they may not have realized just how big this gig was in American culture. 6 Beyonce, 2013 Of course she's on this list. It's Beyonce, for crying out loud. She has a stage presence that is unrivaled by any musician of her generation. But what really made her show unique wasn't just the surprise Destiny's Child reunion. It was also the fact that she actually paid respect to the event by starting her show with a soundbite from legendary football coach Vince Lombardi. 25 Indiana Jones, 1995 If you thought Katy Perry's shark was weird, get a load of this. Disney used this halftime show to promote its new Indiana Jones ride at Disneyland, and it featured Indy, not played by Harrison Ford, trying to steal a plastic Vince Lombardi trophy from a temple. Throw in a lip-syncing Patti LaBelle and Tony Bennett, and you have a real stinker. 26 Black Eyed Peas, 2011 Before this show, Young UNS were celebrating the end of the halftime show being owned by the retirement home. Afterwards, the old folks were smugly smirking. The peas were absolutely abominable, with stiff choreography and mailed-in vocals that made the who seem 40 years younger. The absolute worst moment came when Slash arrived to save the day, only for Fergie to commit a cardinal sin against rock by mangling Sweet Child O' Mine. Later in 2011, the P's new album got panned, their motion sensor video game bombed, and by year's end, they announced they were going on hiatus. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to channels.